because it's to be of most concern. And you, you probably understand already in the UK, the correction, the police officers were more concerned with knife attacks than weapons because weapons have not been very openly available firearms in, in the UK until fairly recently. The other thing that was determined during these uh, instrumented studies was that the uh, strike uh, in either direction uh, is bimodal. And by that, what I mean is somebody doesn't just stab you like that or like that. They <coughs> hit you and they keep pushing. So you get two modes of force. Uh, and therefore, an instrument to measure precisely uh, and, uh, whether or not a weapon protects against that bimodal type human attack uh, must have a, bi a bimodality or a push-push type uh, system of its own. And so that was designed and engineered into the testing apparatus, uh, which we'll show you in a moment. The other uh, thing that is important to understand is that uh, if you are considering the three different protection levels, level, call them level one, two, and three, um, those levels were uh, generated based on the 85th, 90th, and 96th percentile uh, of individuals in terms of uh, how many people or how many of these uh, really brutish type people you're going to be able to protect yourselves with in a practical basis. Now, the National Institute of Justice, which is the research arm of the Department of Justice charged with policy relevant research and monetary standards for both ballistics and corrections armor as well as stair resistant or knife resistant armor, uh, generated, um, adopted the, uh, the PSDB standard and its energy levels uh, and added what they call the engineered spike, which is that nasty little ice pick you have samples of, uh, so that uh, corrections armor could be certified as well as exterior uh, tempered knife type resistant armor. Uh, I should point out that police officers have not uh, seen much need for uh, the so-called engineered blade type protections. Those vests require uh, heavy ring mesh or chain mail on top of ballistic materials. And the fact is that in terms of, uh, thank you, David, uh, you can probably all see that inside this vest is uh, a chain, a heavy layer of chain mail. And these vests are about three times to three and a half times the weight of a level two puncture resistant armor, such as the one that the corrections officers in Pennsylvania have. Um, but the the interesting part about it is bullet resistant vests not only have a uh, flawless protection uh, history against uh, uh, firearms uh, on police officers, but they have also protected about 12% of the officers that have been saved uh, from injury against uh, stabbing and slashing uh, attacks from everything from tempered knives to bottles. In other words, the loose bullet resistant materials do pretty well against broad bladed knives but they won't stop that ice pick. The ice pick just wiggles right between the, the weave and the fibers. So what we have is a situation now where the National Institute of Justice Standard 0115.00 uh, offers uh, protection against puncture, if you will, against these ice pick-like instruments. And the reason that that's important for corrections officers is because if you look all across the country and in the UK inside the prisons, these sharps and shanks that you're coming up against and, and that you're confiscating, uh, about the worst possible scenario, or maybe more than the worst possible scenario, is that nasty little ice pick. Uh, that's the hardest thing to stop amongst all of these sharps and shanks. Uh, and in fact, even level one in the National Institute of Justice standard has been shown to stop all confiscated weapons that have ever been tested against it. This is the test apparatus. Uh, what you can't see is that that drop tube uh, is about uh, three meters tall. It goes over 10 feet up into the ceiling. Uh, and at different protection levels, uh, the uh, nylon, that white nylon sabo and the stainless steel fixture underneath it hold whatever it is uh, is dropped. And we raise that uh, sabo, that weighted sabo up that very precisely engineered drop tube 
and the higher you raise it, the higher the drop energy at impact, of course. Uh, and so that's how they measure and control when they drop that ice pick, or in the case of the uh, simulations that I, under I was not a uh, participant in the studies that were done for uh, the Department of Corrections out there, but I understand that Armour Express uh, commissioned a special holder for the bottom of that tube so that different confiscated weapons from your prisons could be inserted into it and dropped it at level two energies uh, out there and I understand that those tests were quite successful. This drop tester is a smooth, precise, consistent, uh, it's very impressive piece of uh, uh, engineering and, and inside that sable, if you'll notice the nylon uh, sable is what the uh, stainless steel fixture that holds the weapon uh, is inserted into. Inside that sable is a series of foam discs. And so what happens when that thing comes down is it comes down and bounces up and comes down again. So that's how you get your, your biomodal type, push, push type attack. It's quite impressive when you see it firsthand. I hope I didn't wake everybody up there. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, the, the vacuum material that used is shown there. It's different types of, of neoprene and rubber foam. It's a, a total of about uh, five and a half inches thick. Uh, and it's judged to be somewhere between normal plastic and clay and 10% and ordinance gelatin in, in its stringency. Uh, the importance to you there is that ordinance gelatin is, is uh, calibrated to the soft tissue of the human. So it's a uh, more stringent, more difficult packing material than the body gives the best on the body. In other words, if, uh, if that spot is stopped on that hard backing material, uh, there's no way it's going to get through on the human torso. So there's, there's a lot of conservatism uh, built into this standard so that uh, anything that works in the lab is going to work better on the dynamic elastic human torso. Uh, those are the two engineered blades that are in both the PSDB and the NIJ test. And, they are just, and those are the ones that require these heavy ring mesh or other metallic solutions that are very stiff and thick and boardy and, and quite expensive uh, and not really germane to confiscated weapons inside a corrections facility. Uh, the spike is shown next, um, if you, uh, which is, a, is a shown there. And I think there's a, if you go just go on to the next slide, if you will. You can see the spike on the end of the sable right there. Uh, and of course it utilizes for corrections armor the realistic impact energies that we've seen earlier. Uh, and it, I say there that it seems to match corrections officers' needs. It really exceeds corrections officers' needs because I don't think you'll ever find a confiscated weapon that is really sharp and, and pointy and difficult to stop as that spike. And it's designed to, intended to be the, the worst possible scenario against a confiscated weapon inside a prison. Um, so to summarize, the NIJ and the PSD staff standards are based on human strike data. Um, they, they combine three realistic protection levels. You have a second one or about the 90th percentile level, which is far more than, than you need for any confiscated weapons. Uh, and it's still a very nice, uh, lightweight, wearable vest. The testing apparatus is quite sophisticated. Uh, two of those test apparatuses exist in the United States. One is at HP White Laboratory in Street, Maryland, not too far from you. Uh, and uh, just across the Susquehanna River, really, from, from where you are. Uh, and um, of course, um, the level one uh, spike resistance has been shown to exceed the needs against confiscated weapons not only from your prison, but from California. And back when we were doing this original research, we, we had collected confiscated weapons from corrections <coughs> facilities in Missouri, California, and other places. Uh, and that's why we, the, 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 back when we were designing the original vests, um, which were stiffer and heavier than these newer and nicer ones today, uh, we chose the protection levels we did then. That's all I have, and I, I suppose that the questions are in the way. If, if we could, we'd like Mr. Kessling to narrate the actual video of the testing procedure. I appreciate it. That's right.
let's keep the narration in the trench. What you're seeing here is the, one of the test pieces that was provided. It's copper tubing, actually, from an institution. This is another. This is one that's commonly found in Pennsylvania. It's a toothbrush that's been sharpened. Again, these were weapons that were provided um, at the time of testing by uh, the union. Uh, what they're showing now, what they're going to continue to show, is uh, the testing apparatus. I believe that they go through this three different times, and that's just the counter on there. Uh, oh, that one's sorry. That's the foot in the air before it's dropped, as Mr. Buckner talked about. There you go, over five feet. This is the test being done with the, the test piece in it. That was the toothbrush um, that had been sharpened to a point, again, an actual confiscated weapon from an institution being tested on the best that we currently have uh, issued to a correction officer. As you can see, uh, it did not penetrate the best and it also shattered the, uh, the toothbrush handle. I'd also like to say that you'll see in here that these, these Vests aren't tested just one time, they're tested three different times in three different areas. Each time it's marked on the vest. Um, they're not only just tested right in the center of the vest, but in the corner of the vest, up near the shoulders. Again, this is another test piece again, uh, that was done. This is just showing it coming down the tube. As Mr. Walker said, it's kind of impressive for those of us who were able to witness this because it goes up into the ceiling and it comes down at a, a pretty good a rate. Of this is at an angle, which I didn't know that we did. They actually test these, uh, all the best at an angle, so if you're being uh, a threat, it's coming with a thrust up or a thrust down. It's just not a straight on test. Um, so this is what it's trying to mimic. Uh, and again, these are test pieces used. This is a boot shank, for those of you in here. Uh, we find these common, there was a piece of copper tubing that was brought. Being uh, tested. <coughs> Those sneakers were really in uh, fashion at that time. <laughs> Again, people may think that, oh my goodness, they're using a pencil, but generally these are, these are things that we find in, in the correction setting, and again, these are things that were provided that, that we could test with all of us there present to see what, what they would do. And I'm not sure what that is. Is that the force? Trying to show 